Hello and welcome back. In our last unit, we examined the revolutions in France and the Americas that shook the foundations of European society to its core, starting from a single premise, the notion that all men are created equal. The concept of equality thus became a cornerstone of modern political theory, along with the notions of natural right, popular sovereignty, and rejection of absolutist rule. As thinkers such as Locke and Jefferson, Voltaire and Rousseau, asserted the freedom and equality of humanity in its natural state, they created a de facto challenge to the absolutist regimes that had dominated European politics for centuries. By undermining, at least conceptually, the foundations of monarchical rule, these men made several questions inevitable. What is the role of government? Who should rule? And how should a government unite its peoples? Prior to the Atlantic Revolutions, these matters had been decided largely by hereditary rulers. But after the revolutions, groups traditionally excluded from participating in government laid claim to the natural rights and political protections that an implied social contract was believed to guarantee. But the exercise of those rights required new political paradigms. Certainly, the execution of the King of France, Louis XVI, in 1793, announced a new age by proving that no ruler was unanswerable to his people, and by symbolizing, for many, the end of absolute monarchy and the birth of a new French national identity. The death of Louis also raised some vexing questions. Without a king, how could there be a kingdom? And if there was no kingdom, what should there be? This week, we'll examine the ideologies that emerged in the 19th century to answer these questions, specifically the ideologies of liberalism, conservatism, and nationalism. Let's begin by clarifying the concept of ideology, by which we'll designate a system of beliefs or theories, often political, held by an individual or a group and used to justify its actions. Liberalism fits this definition. Its philosophical provenance can be traced to John Locke. As we noted in a previous lecture, Locke reasoned that each man has a natural right to life, liberty, and property, and that an implicit social contract obligates the government to recognize those rights. Both the United States Constitution and the French Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizens are founded on the principle of protecting an individual's rights. So it's not surprising that liberal thinkers supported both the American Revolution and the early stages of the French Revolution, although liberal support for the latter waned markedly once the Jacobins, the most radical of the French revolutionaries, instituted the infamous reign of terror under the direction of Robespierre, who was later guillotined for its excesses. It's important to note that most classic liberal thinkers also did not believe in a complete restructuring of society. That would be the mission of the socialists who emerged later in the 1800s. But liberal thinkers also opposed traditional conservatism, seeking instead to replace absolutism in government with representative democracy and the rule of law. Perhaps the most mature expression of 19th century liberalism was formulated by the English philosopher John Stuart Mill in his book On Liberty, published in 1859, 70 years after the onset of the French Revolution. For Mill, social tyranny represented as much of a danger to human freedom as governmental or civil tyranny, and he borrowed de Tocqueville's phrase, tyranny of the majority, to describe it. To protect an individual's liberty from majority pressures, Mill proposed the following rule, namely, that the only circumstance under which a society can forcibly restrict the freedom of one of its members is to prevent harm to other members of the society. In other words, society may curtail any behavior that harms others, but may suppress nothing else. As far as possible, society should seek to preserve individual liberties since free choice and action is necessary to ensure progress within the society as a whole. We can detect in this formulation some of the concerns that modern libertarians have voiced regarding their freedom to act as they choose. Conservatism, the next ideology we'll examine, was a direct reaction to liberalism. The most eloquent and influential of the early conservatives was an Irish statesman, 
Edmund Burke. In his Reflections on the French Revolution, 1790, the date of publication, Burke expressed profound skepticism about both the French Revolution and liberal ideology. Burke distrusted any kind of rapid change, any kind of revolutionary overturning of existing things. He was not opposed to change as such, but he favored change that we would now consider to be organic, change that came slowly from inside a society that properly respected tradition. While he rejected unrestrained royal power, Burke was a firm believer in constitutional monarchy. Conservatives often quoted him when defending traditional approaches to government throughout the 19th century and when repudiating any notions of natural right or social contract.